I still get nightmares. In fact, I get them so often I should be used to them by now. I'm not. No one ever really gets used to nightmares. For a while there, I tried every pill imaginable. None of it helped. stalking me for too long to remember. Sadly, though, I'm not looking forward to the prospect. I say sadly because there was a time where I actually enjoyed sleeping. That was before my friend Lude woke me up at three in the morning and asked me to come over to his place. Who knows? If I hadn't heard the phone ring, would everything be different now? I think about that a lot. Lude told me about this old guy who lived in his building. He had a first floor apartment peering out over the wide, overgrown courtyard. Supposedly, the old man had told Lude he would be dying soon. I didn't think much of it. He called himself Zampano. As Lude told it, Zampano had lived in the building for many years. Though he mostly kept to himself, he never failed to appear every morning, every evening, to walk around the courtyard. A wild place with knee-high weeds and, back then, populated with over 80 stray cats. And then the old man died. The police found Zampano just like Lude found him, lying face down on the floor. The paramedics said that there was nothing unusual, it's just the way it goes. The system goes down, lights blink out, and there you have it. Another body on the floor surrounded by things that don't mean much to anybody except the one who can't take any of them along. The next day, the landlord posted a notice of abandonment, and a week later, after declaring that the contents of the apartment were worth less than $300, he called some charity to haul the stuff away. That was the night that Lude made his awful discovery.
When the phone rang, I was fast asleep. Lude's a good enough friend that I actually dragged my ass out of bed at three in the morning and headed over to Franklin. He was waiting outside the gate with a wicked gleam in his eye. I should have turned around right then. I should have at least known something was up. The way Lude's keys rattled like bone chimes as he opened the main gate, the hinges suddenly shrieking as if they weren't entering a crowded building but some ancient moss-eaten crypt. or the way we padded down the dank hallway buried in shadows. Or most important of all, the way Lude whispered when he told me things. The first peculiar thing, where are the cats? Apparently, in the months preceding the old man's death, the cats had begun to disappear. By the time he died, they were all gone. The second peculiar thing you'll see for yourself, Lude said. We had reached the door, and now I shudder. All the windows were nailed shut, sealed with caulking. Front entrance and courtyard doors all stormproofed. Even the vents were covered with duct tape. This peculiar effort to eliminate any ventilation in the tiny apartment did not culminate with bars on the windows or multiple locks on the doors. As I discovered, the refrigerator wasn't empty, but there wasn't any food in it either. Sampano had crammed it full of strange, pale books. Of course, all of that's gone now. Long gone. Sure, his place was eclectic, but hardly grotesque. Until, of course, you took a more careful look and realized, hey, why are all these candles unused? Why no clocks? Not on the walls, not even on the corner of a dresser. And what's with these strange pale books, or for the fact that there's hardly a goddamn bulb in the whole apartment? He was blind as a bat. Just as my friend had described, on the floor, and in fact practically dead center, were four marks, all of them longer than a hand, Jagged bits of wood clawed up by something neither one of us cared to imagine. But that's not what Lude wanted me to see, either. He was pointing at something else which hardly impressed me when I first glanced at its implacable shape. I know a moment came when I felt certain its resolute blackness was capable of anything. Maybe even of slashing out and tearing up the floor, murdering Zampano, murdering us, maybe even murdering you. And the moment passed. The thing became only a thing. So I took it home. 
May at least some of the horror I took away at four in the morning you now have before you. Waiting for you a little like it waited for me that night. As I discovered, there were reams and reams of it. Endless snarls of words, sometimes twisting into meaning and sometimes twisting into nothing at all. At first, only curiosity drove me from one phrase to the next. Often, a few days would pass before I'd pick up another mulled scrap. Maybe even a week. But still, I returned. Grazing over the scenes, the names, small connections starting to form, minor patterns evolving in those spare slivers of time. Dozens of hours just blinking by, lost in the twist of so many dangerous sentences. I grew more and more disoriented, increasingly more detached from the world. Nothing could distract me. I felt like I was losing control. Something terrible was going to happen. Eventually, something terrible did happen. No one could reach me. Out of the blue, beyond any cause you can trace, you'll suddenly realize things are not how you perceive them to be at all. For some reason, you will no longer be the person you believed you once were. You'll detect slow and subtle shifts going on all around you. More importantly, shifts in you. You no longer trust the very walls that you always took for granted. Even the hallways you've walked a hundred times will feel longer, much longer. The shadows, or any shadow at all, will suddenly seem deeper. Much, much deeper. Nailed my window shut, threw out the closet and bathroom doors, stormproofed everything, and a dozen measuring tapes nailing all those straight into the floor and the walls. I wanted a closed, inviolate, and most of all immutable space. At least the measuring tapes should have helped. They didn't. Nothing did.
Zampano writes constantly about seeing. What we see, how we see, and what in turn we can't see. Over and over again, in the one form or another, he returns to the subject of light, color, space, shape, rhythm, line, contrast, and composition. None of which is surprising, considering Zampano's piece centers on a documentary film called The Navidson Record made by a Pulitzer Prize-winning photojournalist who must somehow capture the most difficult subject of all. The sight of darkness itself. Hotel now. My studio's history. Uh, a lot these days is history. I haven't even washed all the blood off yet. Not all of it's mine, either. What's happened here? I keep asking myself, what have I done? What would have you done? I went straight for the guns and I loaded them and I tried to decide what to do with them. The obvious thing was shoot something. After all, that's what guns are designed to do, shoot something, but who? What? I didn't have a clue. There were people, and cars outside of my hotel window. Midnight people I didn't know, midnight cars I've never seen before. I could have shot them. I could have shot them all.
matter where you are, you'll watch yourself dismantle the very assurance you ever lived by, fighting with everything you've got not to face the thing you most dread, the creature you truly are, the creature we all are, buried in the nameless black of a name. Your eye will no longer linger on the light. You'll care only about the darkness. And you'll watch it. It'll get so bad that you'll be afraid to look away. You'll be afraid to sleep. And the nightmares will begin. Thank you.